Welcome to this tutorial about creating our own autocomplete component in Blazor. To make the display at the end a bit more meaningful, here we are going to not only generate five weather forecasts, but 50, so that we have a bit more to filter in the presentation at the end. Then we are going to build the component here directly in the fetch data component. So we are not actually going to create a new component. Yeah, you get the idea. We're just going to, to build the logic in here. Now we have here an array of weather forecasts. We called it forecasts. We will still need this array because we want to display all the generated forecasts. But we are going to create a new collection. This time it's a list of type uh, with string as a generic uh, parameter. And I just call it options. So this list is going to display all the available options when the user has entered a search word. Now, how am I going to initialize it? I'm going to say forecasts, select, we only want the summary. And because we are generating 50 weather forecasts, the possibility is quite high that we have two of them have the same summary. So I'm going to call distinct so that we have them only once. And I have to call to list. Now we have the options here and just up here. I'm going to create a div and in this div, I am going to step over all the options. And here I'm making a quick check because I don't want to display all the options. I only want to display the options that are, that contain the word that the user has put in. Therefore, I'm going to create an input and we have to bind this input against something. I'm going to create a auto implemented property and I call it search word. So this input bind to search word and the event will be on input. Otherwise we would have to, the, otherwise the input would have to lose focus so that the search word is getting updated with the newest value. Now, in here, if item to upper, oh, to upper contains search word to upper, then I am going to display it. Why am I calling to upper? Because I want to, I want that the, the spelling I, if, if a user types the word out in lowercase or in capital case, I just want to uh, that it doesn't make any difference. Now we are displaying here the item. Now we also want to have a functionality where if the user clicks on this item, we want that the search word is getting updated. So here I'm just calling search word. I'm assigning item to search word here. Now, of course, I have to style it, but first here I have to filter the forecasts. So that's the array that is generated for us by the weather forecast service. Here I'm saying, again, I'm just selecting the summary, where the summary to upper contains the search word to upper. In these cases, we are going to display the weather forecast. Now, because I'm generating 50 of them, we would have a, a scroll bar on the whole website and I want to make it a bit more, I want to style it just a little bit. So here I'm going to create a div and this div will have a height of let's just say 50% of the whole viewport and the overflow on the Y axis we would have a scroll. So now, as I promised, I'm going to quickly style this here. So you yeah, are just giving it a clause of autocomplete. Just giving it a width 
of 200 pixels and the section uh, is of high 25 pixel with just 100% of the parent and then I'm also going to say if the item is getting over the background color changes to something like light sea green. So now it should work, but I just quickly recap the thing that I'm doing here. So the weather forecast array, that's the array that we all know that's getting generated for us. Then here are the options. Here I want to have all the different summaries because the summary is this type of property that we actually want to filter. So here I'm just going to select summary, but because I want to have it only displayed once in a list, I'm going to call distinct. And yes, of course, to list because it's of type list string. Now, here in the options, we are going to display the options if the options, if the option contains the entered search word that the user provides. So I hope this makes sense. And the search word, of course, is getting um, transmitted over this input here. So let's have a look. Now we should start with 50 forecasts because we haven't. OK, yes, I know where the problem is here in this property. I have to initialize it with string empty. Otherwise, we are getting a null reference exception. But now it should work. So here we see we can scroll and here we have all the, the 50 forecasts. Now here in these options, we start out with displaying every option. We are, can enhance this afterwards a bit. So I start typing. Cool, I only get yeah one. Now I have two options. I click on scorching and then I only have the, the items with this summary. Uh, what do we have? Yeah, you can just type and then click it. OK, so but we will start out with every option displayed. Maybe that's a bit. Maybe that's a bit an overkill. How can we fix this? We have to fix this in here. And we can just in this if statement say. Search word length greater than two. So if we start out, of course, search word length will, uh, will be zero. And in this case, we won't, or we won't display the options only if the provided search word is longer than two, has more than two characters. So again, we see all of the 50 ones. I start out typing. Now I see the possible possibilities, of course, in this case, we only have one. I'm just searching. Is there an option where we can type free? Yeah, you get the idea. Uh, in this scenario, you would probably just do it with one. Otherwise, you're not getting that many different options displayed. Yeah, you get the idea. OK, now now I have two options, scorching, and then you see all the scorching. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.